Welcome back to MarketDominationProgram.com, Ethical Cult Marketing Section 2. What we're going to talk about today are, we've already talked about the anthropology of a cult. We talked about boundaries, and we talked about initiation. Today we're going to talk about customs and ideology. Customs, cults are a, have their own set of customs. They are a parallel social universe. They have their own rituals, their own relationship structures, and their own experiences. This binds individuals to the cause. Some of these make no sense, and that's particularly why they're designed that way. For example, in Jehovah's, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you're not allowed to wear gold-rimmed glasses. Why? I have no idea. I'm sure they have a reason for it, but it makes no sense. However, they have all these lists of the rules, um, they call, uh, things you can and cannot do. If you think about it, every religion has one, um, even if it's as simple as just the Ten Commandments to the 613 laws of the Talmud in Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, to um, more obvious cults and the rules they have. However, those rules could apply to your financial services practice and get people to commit. So, for example, something as simple as they have to refer at least three times a year, or when they come to your client experiences, they have to wear a shirt um, with your logo on it if they're an existing client or each level of client A, B, C, D, we call it gold, silver, platinum, millionaires club has perhaps a different color um, shirt that they wear or it tells them, you know, I am a gold level client at Silver Spoon right on there because if you think about it, even within your cult of customers, you should have almost want to create separate clicks because the higher up the cut ladder the customers go, DCBA, the higher up you are, the cooler you are, the more people want to be in that group, the more people want to be like the cool kids. Ideology cults program what members think and what they do. They have strong central ideology and central leadership, which fosters alignment and it fosters clarity. Most cults, um, some of the most no, successful, if you could call it that, cults are personality cults. Um, for example, in Scientology, anything written or said by L. Ron Hubbard is referred to as the tech. Um, psychology, for example, they say psychology doesn't work because they don't have the tech. Um, so that helps build L. Ron Hubbard's brand. A example of a company that is a personality cult would be Steve Jobs, um, would be Apple. Um, he has built a phenomenal cult around himself. The only problem is every time he has uh, a cancer scare or a heart scare or a health scare, Apple stock starts getting a little bit shaky. And the reason for that is people's so tie Steve Jobs to Apple that a lot of issues are coming up around his succession. His, what, what's going to happen because he can't do it forever. Um, let's talk about some examples of specifics. Um, the firewall, um, cults build a protective barrier. It's usually an information firewall and only those on the inside get to know. Outsiders are kept largely in the dark. Big Brother, cults define what they are for as opposed to what they are not. And they usually define a Big Brother enemy of the outside world. So if you're a financial advisor, let's say if you're independent, the enemy could be those big wirehouse firms. It could be Merrill Lynch, it could be Smith Barney. Um, it could be a person. So, for example, you could be the anti Susie Orman, and every time she posts a blog post, you put up a blog post on your blog telling why she's wrong. Um, you could be anti Bob Brinker um, or whatever financial commentator you want to use. Current events are great examples of ways to do this. Bernie Madoff did this great. Um, he had a, the black box with a secret formula that picked all the investments and no one got to know the formula that went in the black box. So of course everybody wanted to invest in the black box formula. So don't tell them every single thing you do. Don't give them every single fundamental analysis and technical analysis tool you use to pick investments because then it's less mysterious and they can do it themselves. You want to tease them, give them enough information to want what you've got, but not enough that they could go do it someplace else. Join us next week for more Ethical Cult Marketing for MarketDominationProgram.com. I'm Seth Green. Thanks for watching.